Hey there, folks. It's uh, Pilgrim Payne 59 here from the uh, Suspects Clans. Uh, the subject of this video is uh, the Iron Horse Control Room details. Uh, we're going to go over the uh, the build that we use, that I use, and we're also going to go over the specific mechanics of how to do the uh, control room uh, part of the second boss for the Iron Horse. Uh, this would be the Feaser boss, I believe, it's Boss Feaser. Um, the purpose for doing this, you, you'd think I'd uh, be working myself out of the job, so to speak, but that's not the case. We want everybody to know uh, how to do everything so that uh, we can spread the joy out, especially for those people that need to get the Ravenous and the Regulus guns. Uh, by spreading the knowledge, everybody can possibly start their own raids if they want to and get through this part easily. Just from the information that uh, you're going to learn about here. As of this point in time, we only have maybe five to six people that know how to do the control room. So we're going to, the purpose of this is to, you know, let everybody learn how to do the, the control room. <clears throat> the uh, build that I'm going to show you is an approved uh, raid build. And uh, if you have any comments, please feel free to post them. Uh, I'll try to answer any questions that might show up in, in there. Um, and with that being said, uh, let's just move forward and we'll go into the build that's going to be used for this uh, this part of the, the raid. Okay, let's dive into the uh, I, uh, Iron Horse Control Room build. It's largely an armor build. And we'll start off with the specialization. It's the demolitionist. Um, there's only a few things that apply here because you're not really going to be shooting at anybody. Uh, the first item is the fact that you can have the incombustible talent, which increases your burn resistance by 20%. Additionally, you can get the stimulant patch talent, which Armor kits repair 100% damage. And don't worry about boosting weapon handling. That's not going to come into play. You're not going to be sh shooting anything. You may, but it's highly doubtful. Um, I'll explain that when we get into the uh, video of uh, actually doing uh, the Iron Horse raid. Um, the uh, assault rifle damage uh, or the rifle damage may come in handy here 15% uh, uh, because uh, you're going to be equipped with a ravenous here and I'll explain that well, well uh, that rev uh, that relevance uh, in, in a little bit um, pretty much everything else is whatever you want to choose uh, let's go take a look at the rest of the build now Okay, just looking at the face of it, you'll see that this is mostly blue with a little bit of yellow in it. Uh, as I went over before, you have the Demolish Specialization, the Grenade. It doesn't matter, but I just have the Fragmentation Grenade as it comes up with the Demolitionist. Um, I have the King Breaker uh, Assault Rifle, and I have the Ravenous uh, uh, rifle. Uh, this is going to possibly be important. Um, I'll explain later, like I said, when we go into the video. Uh, this is the TDI or TDI card customs pistol. And let's move into the gear itself. The, uh, the uh, mask is the uh, boundary bulwark heat mask. It's got core armor and has protection and burn resistance for the modification. Uh, basically simple. We can move into the backpack. It's the Foundry Bulwark Shield Carrier. And with uh, 
two pieces of foundry bulwark, you get plus 10% total armor. This has the uh, armor core attribute maximized. It also has uh, a maximized uh, armor regen. And the mod it has is bird resistant. It also has a talent, uh, what's called the process refinery. And it increases makeshift repair speed from 15 seconds to 10, 10 seconds. <coughs> and that's going to be critical here. If we go down to the gloves, once again, we're talking about bound repo or crucible gauntlets. This is our third piece, and as you can see, it adds 1% to armor regen and 50% to shield health. <coughs> our core attribute is of maximized one's armor, and the uh, attribute that it has is uh, maximized hazard protection. Then we go into the armor. This is our fourth piece. It's the Foundry Bulwark Forge Plate Armor. And with four pieces, that gives you makeshift repairs. Whenever you or your shield take damage, 20% of that amount is repaired to both over 15%. And since you have the backpack, that gets reduced. I read it to you before. The core attribute on this is maximized armor. It's got uh, maximized hazard protection attribute, and it's got burn resistance uh, modification. The talent on this is improved materials that increase makeshift repairs from 20% to 30%. So that's it for the foundry bulwark equipment. We go down to the uh, holster. Uh, this is a uh, Bellstone Armory Fold and Tacit Holster. And you'll note that having one item of this gives you a plus one on the armor regen. The core value on this is a maximized armor. And the uh, attributes on this has a plus 10% hazard protection and a maximized armor regen. Now we go to the the bear of the package. <laughs> These are the Murakami Industries Emperor Guard knee pads. And these things are extremely hard to get. Uh, an extreme uh, uh, one item gives you a plus 20% skill dura duration. The core attribute gives you a plus one on the skill tier, the yellow skier tier, but you get plus one armor regen and plus one percent armor regen and then armor regen uh, on the other attribute is uh, maximized. The reason these things are so hard to get is they're only available in the dark zone and it took me three, four weeks to get them. And uh, I want to say thank you to Darth Vader right now because we were in a Dark Zone run. Um, the day I got them, I got a message through Discord from uh, Lexicon that uh, Murakami was being dropped in one of the Dark Zones. So I immediately headed there, Lex and Darth and somebody else uh, teamed up and we went looking for the Emperor's Guard knee pads. Fortunately, uh, Darth managed to pull out two of them. He gave me one pair, and he kept one for himself. So, uh, any rate, that so I, a sincere, deepest thank you to to Darth Vader for uh, for partnering with one of his knee pads. And uh, believe it or not, this really helps the build. All right, let's go down to the skills. Uh, the item number one is the fixer drone. Um, 
It's tier one. It gives you plus twenty percent armor repair plus seventy health. Um, I tried to expense extend the duration on it. Uh, that's what the graphene battery does. And you also get some health from the trauma analyzer. Um, the damage doesn't really matter. Um, but that's basically it in a nutshell. It really is a strong device for this, uh, this build. Um, the other device is the Restorer Hive. It's also at a tier one. Um, I extended its duration by making it expertise, expertise two. And uh, you get reviver arm, armor repair as part of what I put in there. And the range is extended by 5%. Uh, that, that really helps up in the control room. Anyhow, that's, uh, that's the whole build in a nutshell. And uh, let's go take a look at the stats on this. Now, you're not really going to be shooting at anybody. Uh, your weapon stance stats are not all that great. And your crit chance, crit damage are fairly low. You got a high headshot damage, but it's not really going to matter. Um, in fact, none of this offensive uh, items are really going to matter, uh, except perhaps the assault rifle and the rifle damage. Uh, that's it. Uh, mostly it's the rifle damage that you want to worry with. Um, uh, you get the process re refinery from the backpack and improved materials from the armor. Um, going through all that, but here's where we get into it. Your armor is at 1.8 million. <coughs> And your armor regens at 70,000. Uh, 70, your health max is 333,000. So, <clears throat> health regeneration is 1.6 to 1,000. And uh, you get the hazard protection at 50%. And burn resistance, which is critical in this, is 98.3%. Almost 100, but not quite. Uh, those are the critical items uh, with regard to the defense. Um, get some extra health here from the drone. Um, And then from the hive, you're going to get some extra skill haste from it. You get 12 charges out of it. And the range is 9.2. So, that's basically it for the stats, the build itself. When we go into the video, you're going to actually see how this equipment's all used. And I'll explain it in detail. And I'll also explain in detail what you have to do to complete the mission for facing boss number two in the control room. And like I said, all you're going to be doing basically is operating buttons and switches and, and items like that. You're not going to be. Um, firing your weapon at anybody except for perhaps one specific case and then uh, I'll go into a little bit of detail on that at any rate that's it for the build right now let's move right into the uh, video on the actual gameplay okay before we actually start the video I'd like to split talk about the uh, the steps that are 
done while you're in the control room. And basically, it's split into four parts. The very first part is where you're dealing with the screens. And you're basically filling up the, uh, the crucible that's in the middle. And you'll see what I mean when I show you the video. But uh, there's some screens that are on the left side of the control room and you are going to be told uh, what picture to look at and you display that you tell the information that you see on the screen to everybody else and every time you do this successfully the cauldron will be filled up and it takes four times to fill it up and once that's done then you move on to step number two now step number two is moving the cauldron so it's over top of the cannon that's on the second train car. And uh, you'll uh, see the controls and everything in the video of how to do this. It's actually in the center of the control room at looking over the furnace area. Then the third part is, is once you have the crucible emptied on top of the, the turret, um, you have to spray water on it. And that requires going back to the uh, the wall behind you and operating a uh, a lever that, that uh, you have to wait until the pressure gets to 85 to 90. And there's a meter there that you read. And then the final part is that you have to open the middle door, the B door, so that everybody can shoot boss feeder in the middle of the room. But you have to wait until everybody gets to into B before you can open that door. And uh, that's basically it in a nutshell. So uh, having said that, we'll uh, go to the video now. And uh, at the first part of the video, what I'm going to do is actually show you where the screens are, where the console is, where the water controls are, where the door controls are all that stuff before the actual uh, work starts in the video. So having said that, let's move on to the video. Here's our little tour of the control room first. These are the six screens that you're going to be looking at. Somebody downstairs is going to tell you which screen to look at, and then you have to tell everybody what shows up on the screen. Uh, it gets hotter than hell in there. Am I good being in my previous position? Ludicrous here, uh, you know, previous where Mike pointed me at. Now these, these are the door control buttons, uh, levers. You got A, B, and C, left to right. If you look at the top center, there's a indicator in screen at the top that tells you if somebody's in the door. Here, go there and we'll, we'll let you know if it's not working. Drop it back for it. This is the back wall where the water uh devices are the round thing in the middle is the water meter just underneath that there's a water lever that's what you have to push to send water to the guy downstairs um zan have you done downstairs at all yet uh no i this is the part of the right i, I don't know on the left side is door a just beyond that to the right is where the water hose is located uh that door a is where somebody's going to be reading okay, too easy. what's on the I, screen to you. real quick I'll be going in and out of this door. Um, the right side is door C. That's where somebody's going to shoot the stops on the uh, conveyor for the uh, crucible. The control room's going to open it for me. I'll be calling out codes and running back and forth. Um, as I'm calling out code... Door B is directly below your feet. Above door B is a screen that has some codes that tells whoever's looking in to find out what screen to look at is they're gonna say you know two broken cups on a belt <clears throat> or whatever the monitor is right in the middle you can see the picture there the monitor that and the number to the right is how full the monitor or how full the when crystal that, is come over and check this picture when it's 100 mm -hmm. percent, it's completely this, full you know, as you get close to it that at that point you come to the crucible control panel and you operate moving the crucible from where it is now back to over top of the turret that flap will open up back away and you'll see it close. Sure. At doors one, A, B, and C, they are the doors to vestibules. 
<coughs> Each of the doors are closed on the inside in its default position. Somebody has to walk into the vestibule. And then you pull the lever and it opens the inner door and closes the outer door. And as long as you hold that lever, it stays that way. Just then, Lex came into the vestibule in A. I opened, pulled the lever, the in inner door opened, and he read the code from the top of door B. Then I let go of it. And he was back inside. He should have a picture or something. Should he never walked out. He just stood inside the door. Oh, okay, yeah. that's right. Okay, okay. Alright, I've got one rocket. Now, I read the first code off, or he read, gave me the first screen. I read the results of that off. And this gets the sequence started. Picture six, pill, picture six. Now we have to do it four more times. Picture six is an empty cracked cup on a hook, not moving. Empty cracked. Now the boss is throwing incendiary devices at the main uh, window, and that's going to break shortly, and it's going to make things hot. You can wait a little bit, but you're going to have to throw down your restorer hive soon. The thermometer in the top left of the screen appears. And you can see the temperatures going up. All right, there we go. Now, just then, I was waiting for the pictures on the screen to come up before I opened the door for Let's Lex see. to go back in there. Picture one, Bill. Picture one. Is my volume okay? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 Cool. There I am, dropping my restorer hive. Picture one is an empty cup on one hook. Not moving. Empty cup on one hook. Not moving. That is lexicons. Multiple now you notice that uh, that's us. Yep. Shoot my the box. crucible is 25 percent. Uh, is that empty? Hold on. No, it's full. It's full. It's full. Yep. Shoot my box. Ours is full. Oh shoot. Okay. Shoot my box. Yeah. That did not work. Right, Whatever happened. I think I was too slow shooting the box. Waiting for the codes or the pictures to come back. Yep. Yeah, the rockets are ready as well. Whatever. I don't know we're not there yet. Yep, yes we are. Now you hear that noise? <clears throat> That's an alarm. And that means we have to shoot two uh, rockets pictures, at the uh, turret. The so I'm going to open the door for Lex. And, and he's shooting one rocket there, it's a second way. rocket. The now he's going to read the codes. That is picture six. Picture six, Bill. Picture six is an empty cup on a hook moving. Empty cup on a hook moving. Now you'll note that my uh, restore hive is empty there, or used up and it's rebuilding, so I'm going to have to uh, send out my uh, drone here shortly. You can see my armor is going down. And uh, the last time they read the thing off, uh, the crucible is now 50% full, as you can see on the screen. No, 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 that's fine. All right, I'm ready. Yep. Hopefully this will be the third iteration. That's picture three, Bill, picture three. Got it. Uh, picture three is an empty cup on a hook, not moving. Empty cup on a hook, not moving. Uh, that is us. Oh, uh, that's Twitch. That, that one worked. It went from 50 to 75%. Okay, I'm back oh, in for good, whatever. Yeah, I missed that shitter was mine. Sorry. You can see on that screen that somebody's in the vestibule not the picture, A. Sorry, not the picture. Ready for me to open the door. Thank you for tardigrade, whoever it were. Pictures are up. Okay, ready for rockets. Once again, the rocket alarm is going off. All right, waiting on the picture. Stand by. Picture two, pill. Picture two. Picture two is an empty cup on a hook, not moving. That's us again. Okay, gotcha. 
Okay, that's 100%. People upstairs, you can start moving down. Now we're done with the screens at this point. Ready whenever you are, Bill. Now we have so to start we moving start? the crucible. Right. You go to the control in the center right. and you move it. Right. And it'll go to a position where it stops. Move it to C. So now you have to pull the lever on door C. And in this case, hypnotic image yeah, is in C. And he's going to shoot the weak point on the uh, traverse, the, the railing that the crucible moves along. So that it clears, and this has to be done three times. In the meantime, you have to wait and listen to hear when the alarm goes off in case they have to shoot the rockets. Now, if your armor goes down too far and you can't handle it through your hive or your drone. <clears throat> That's where the uh, ravenous rifle comes in. Might be it. Yeah, should be. We'll wait for rockets one more time and then do mm -hmm. water. Emptying the crucible now. At this point right now, we're emptying the crucible onto the turret. Rockets. You can hear the alarms going <laughs> off. But as I was saying, if your armor goes down too far, you can take out your ravenous and shoot Boss Feaser from the window there. And uh, five yeah, shots, one shoulder, five shots, another, five shots, another shoulder, the other shoulder, back and forth. And you'll be able to rebuild your armor. Let's get ads under control. There's an ad up here, upstairs, coming at you, Fortune. Oh, I'm sorry, never mind. All right, uh, see he's ready for water. Alright, uh, I need somebody on 15 from A. It's ready. It's ready. Okay, well, I need one person here. Coming. Alright. Um, so what, what do we need? Just whatever, 12, 25, or 15 from A? One fifteen from A. All, all right. C, all, all right. of B. Get water right. beat ready. Alright, open the door for me. Alright, here we go. Right, now so I'm opening one, the door for three, A so that two, Lex can run one, in the door in. and he's going over to the water hose. Now I have to watch... Go. It's 85. I pulled the lever. Awesome, awesome, the awesome. water's now flowing. And it's freezing up the lava on top of the turret. Alright, I'm gonna run through B, maybe. You can see me standing over the door, B. If you can loop an inside B, oh, you're the man. Look at you. That gave him right, Lex. He That's was able okay. to escape that way. I've got a hive. Now everybody is now running into door B. Yep. Twitch. Yep. Get come over to B. Come to the middle and hop in. Come on. Waiting for him to get inside the cubicle or in the vesicle. All right. If you're in front of somebody, don't move. Now I'm opening the door and they're gonna all start shooting. Boss B. Somebody shooting. Find a better spot. Why? When Boss Feaser runs away to the turret, that what means he's going to set off. He's going to stomp his foot and set off some better. explosion, but he'll come back to where he was. You can see my armor is going down, so I'm going to have to set out my drone. That's why I had to close. Alright, after he goes down, we're gonna have to kill ads. There are gonna be a bunch of them waiting for us. No, it's not fair. Alright, pull me back fair. up. Oh. Alright, hip. I'm trying to get my You can see on you. the boss fuser went all the way down, he died. Now the doors around the control room opened. This is not normal here, though. There's not normally anybody up here. I just happen to have my ravenous in hand, so I'm shooting at him. For some reason I can't kill him. Okay, we're not done yet. Chunga on A side. Chunga on A side. Yeah. I'm grabbing the rocket over here. But yeah, once the boss went down, you have to all right, kill all the MPCs that are still out there. That's all done. Now you just run down and head inside through 
door B or whatever door you want and grab the Does loot. Does anybody here need ravenous? Uh, yeah. Of course I do. I don't, I don't okay. think I have any, though. <laughs> neither. Awesome. We have two rockets. Pointy, can you grab that rocket, please? Okay. Yeah, I, I need a uh, ravenous. And that, in a nutshell, is how yeah, you do. <laughs> my, uh, for my main. The control room. You know, Lexikoff is holding down the fort for SAS. He had never ravenous yet. I know he's only 31, but... 